Hello, family, and welcome to another episode of Role Model Makers Experts Cafe. I'm your host, Dr. L, the Parent Whisperer, and today with me, I have an amazing lady, Miss Melanie Underwood. Welcome, Melanie. Thank you for being here today, and thank you, audience members, for tuning in. Uh, Melanie, can you tell our audience members a little bit more about what you do? Uh, because I've seen you in the community. I loved your message and how you show up in the world, so I want our audience members to know it because I believe it needs to be on parents' radars, so uh, welcome. Thank you, Dr. L, for having me today. Hello, everyone. I have a company, Gather Culinary, and I host cooking classes and camps and retreats for families and for kids. And But really, it's a much bigger picture because a lot of kids are afraid of making mistakes now, and they live in a world of perfection. So cooking is a great way to teach them a lot of skills that they need, soft skills, problem solving, critical thinking, and we're able to do this through food and cooking, but they don't even realize it, which is amazing. <laughs> Not to mention the other things that they're learning. You know, uh, yesterday I had a class and we talked about saffron and the kids had no idea where it came from. So we started actually investigating Afghanistan, India, and Pakistan. So they're learning all types of really amazing information and it's allowing them to connect with each other because they're learning about cultures and really a lot of similarities that they have with other people that they didn't realize. I love the culinary history. I once picked up a cookbook and it turned out to actually be a history book and how different cultures and everything blended and meshed together and brought about cuisine that some of which we now love. So it was pretty cool to see that. And uh, one of the things when it comes to culinary arts for kids, the big concern for me as a physician is that childhood obesity, obesity is on the rise. And many times it's actually not what they're eating. It's the fact that we're losing the art of cooking and spending time preparing proper meals. Um, so anyways, I'm sure you know all about that. But uh, let us know how you got involved in all of this and uh, what do you think is the biggest significance of these programs? So I grew up on a farm in Virginia and we lived right next to my grandparents and they also had a farm. So for me, we raised all of our own food. We cooked all of our own food and we did it together as a family. So there was so many layers that just as you said, we are sort of missing in society right now from many people. So I just grew up feeling like, oh, food is life. You know, we, and we ate great food. And when I moved to New York City, it was because I had a job offer and I'll never forget, I was really worried. And I came here and I was shocked because it was so different here. The food didn't taste the same at all. I thought it was gonna be amazing. It was great, but not like my, you know, access to my food that I had in Virginia, which we raised. So I feel like I am here to help parents teach their own children and have me help them learn to do exactly what you're saying, because kids don't know how to cook. They, a lot of parents don't know, and it's no fault of their own. If you haven't really been taught, you know, people eat three meals a day. So people make assumptions like, oh, I know how to cook because I have to do this every day, but they really don't. And often aren't eating really that great food because either they don't have access, they don't know, there's all sorts of barriers that can get in the way. But I'm here to help people let those barriers go and teach them, you know, it's and it's not complicated to eat healthy food that nourishes your body and it really takes care of you. And I know, you know, the expression, you are what you eat, which has a lot of validity to it. So I just want kids to realize they can take care of themselves in a very healthy way and that they, we, are overcoming that epidemic. Right, right. Actually, one of the things that you mentioned early on was that kids are becoming afraid of making mistakes, uh, whether it's our education system or how we are in a rush. Uh, and like you said, again, the, the culinary arts is a great place to exercise math and social bonding and culture and all of these things together. And at the same time, try different things. And just like in art, you know, if, there is no mistake. There is no right way. Having said that, though, I am of the belief, and I'm sure you probably agree, that when you have nutritious food, you do not need to overeat because it's so satisfying that just the right amount is going to make leave you satiated and fulfilled, where you're not going in for more and more because there is something you're missing, and you think if you have more of it, you're going to 
fulfill yes. that. Which yes. Never, right. And also that, you know, that psychological need for fulfillment that kids sometimes have. And it's really that they're missing a connection. I work I work with kids as young as seven, but my primary age group is 12 to 17. And a lot of information that I get from them is I don't feel connected to my peers. And part of that is because, you know, they're on their cell phones when they're right in front of each other. And a lot of them feel very disconnected from their families. Right. And that's a lack of emotional fulfillment that they're not getting. And I think some of the overeating often can come from when you're trying to fulfill not only, you know, a physical need that you think that you have, but it's a psychological need. You're like, oh, I, I need this. I want this because it's going to make me feel better. But yeah, eating better and that those connections that we're definitely missing. And I also, I don't want to make parents feel guilty and bad. I'm not here to shame people. That's why for me, it's really a message of how can I help you? Right. How can I help you connect? How can I help you cook? Mm -hmm. So you're having this sort of fulfillment that maybe might be missing. Absolutely. So in your opinion, uh, when parents come to you, what are the typical concerns that they have that they bring to you? And at the same time, what are the concerns of the children uh, before they start or when they're starting, basically? Kids, again, their concerns are more like, I'm not connecting with my peers. I don't have friends. You know, I'm, I'm not into sports. A lot of kids who come to cooking classes often feel like sports are really competitive and they're not, and they're not sure how to navigate those waters. Mm -hmm. And so the cooking aspect is also very helpful because I, I know a lot of people love competition. I feel like kids get so much of it every day that I strive to not make cooking competitive. Mm -hmm. So the kids is a little bit different They're They don't actually, they're like, I love food. You know, I'm eating, I'm fine. Um, but when they get into it, they're seeing this whole different side parents are like, you know, some of it is, I, I, I want my child to have a life skill, which I'm really happy to hear, yeah. you know, because my parents are older. I'm, I'm 52. So some of younger parent, uh, parents didn't learn how to cook. So they're trying to now have their kids learn, which is an amazing thing, but they're worried they aren't eating well and that their kids aren't listening. Um, but one concern that I have that a lot of parents come to me is they, they do want their kids to be perfect. They're like, oh, can you just make sure that they learn how to do? Mm. And I tell parents and everyone as much as I can, this is not about perfection. In fact, I believe that's one of the worst things that we're doing to our kids is teaching them that they need to be perfect because just as in life, you're not going to be. Mm -hmm. And in cooking, when you make a mistake, it's all about, okay, now what, how do I fix this? Mm -hmm. And what do I do with it? Because that's going to happen. And then it teaches those, them skills of, you know, resiliency, problem solving, the critical thinking, because they're like, oh, you know what? I can figure this out. I've got it. That carries over to other aspects of their life. And most importantly, academically. Right. I love that whole problem solving aspect of it. Uh, we got to give them the opportunity while, while they're in our house to solve their problems as opposed to when they get on their own and then there's nobody else to turn to for yes. support. So absolutely. I, I love it. Um, so what would be the one tip or suggestion that you would have for parents? Uh, when do they, when should they start? Uh, what would be the thing that they could do after watching this, for instance, and then we can go from there. I feel like the one thing that parents can do is to actually cook with their kids, even if it's one day a week, you know, you don't have to be a gourmet chef. You can get your kids involved, let them pick out the recipe and you can teach them how to make a shopping list. This is kids. People don't shop anymore. So it's a little bit tricky, but if you're going to the grocery store, have your kids come with you. Or if you're shopping online, have them make the shopping list, have show them how to go online. That's teaching them all kinds of things, but a lot of math. And so it's also, you know, then they're producing a product when they cook with you that gives them so much pride. And then when you're eating a meal together, that just, you're going to find out so much about your kids and other kids when you're eating together, because they just let go and they start talking and feel really free. So I feel like cooking, I think that's a goal I tell parents to set, depending on how much you're already cooking. If you're not cooking a lot, maybe it's once a week or once every other week. It shouldn't be stressful. It's supposed to be fun and just allowing yourself that opportunity to connect with your kids and have fun through food. Uh, do you have any recommendations for parents to somehow incorporate home cooking into their routines and things like that? I mean, 
I tell people you have to commit, you have to, I tell people put it in your calendar, right? Like if a lot of people don't have it in their calendar, they're not going to do it. So you can literally put in your calendar, Hey, it's Wednesday night. I'm cooking dinner with my family. You tell everyone in the family. And the other thing that I strongly recommend doing is actually putting away electronics because we need to model the behavior that we want from our kids. And I have two, I have a teenager and I have a 25 year old. And I know that if I want my teenager to not be on his phone all the time, I can't be on my phone all the time. So just sort of putting it away, spending that time together. And so committing in a calendar. And then when you're together, be together, not to be just, you know, distracted by your phone. Okay. Melanie, can you tell us a little bit more about also the programs that you have? How long are they and how, um, well, tell us. Yeah. So um, I have different types of classes. I have in-person classes in New York, uh, in Westchester County. Those are after-school classes. I do those essentially Monday through Saturday mm -hmm. and uh, different age groups. And those meet for six weeks at a time. And then I do offer classes online through Zoom. And I that can range. So those, usually what I'll do is I'll have someone come to me and we'll do a group and that can be one session. And I've done it actually up to a family did 30 sessions because they wanted to really commit to making it happen. Right. So I worked just with them, cooking with them on Zoom. They were in Georgia and we did it one night a week together because that was a really great way for them to sort of get into that groove. I was there. I was the facilitator for them. Got it. Okay, very cool. Um, and of course, we have projects with underserved areas and communities that might need this. Do you actually also help with any kind of um, community kitchens and things like that as well? Or do you know? I do. Yeah. I work with a couple different organizations. I work with an organization called Cookies for Kids Cancer. So that is to help raise funds for pediatric cancer. So I do a lot of fundraising for them but i work with an organization it's a local organization it's called lifting up westchester and they have a kitchen and they also are teaching job skills it's very multi-layered what they do um so i try to for me i just try to bring food into everything that i do because that's obviously my passion it's been my career so for me i'm always looking to that whether it is teaching young people or adults job skills you know learning how to cook also is a path is a career pathway exactly. and you don't just have to be a chef you know i am a cookbook author i have a friend who's a lawyer at tv food network you can take food into any sort of career pathway that you love you can also be a dishwasher it's sort of what you want to do and how you want to incorporate it but there's lots of different ways that food can be a sustainable way for people to make a living Right. Absolutely. Just like what we just discussed already, kids could actually go ahead and improve their chances of getting into colleges from some of the suggestions and ideas that you've had, uh, whether it's a book or whether it's philanthropy or career and business, all of those things are viable entities. One more question for you. In your opinion, based on what you've seen, are the students coming in uh, equal as far as gender or separated? How is that? It's pretty equal. You know, I would say um, I probably have 60 kids a week for my company. And then I actually teach in a high school as well. And it's almost 50-50 for culinary, for baking. I do different types of classes. So it's great to see That'd that as well. <laughs> That's really refreshing. Because <laughs> I know there was a time that that was reserved for like yes. females are supposed to go there and males are supposed to go into engineering and uh, unfortunately we haven't improved in the engineering side, but I'm glad to see that. Well, home ec, you know, home ec, I don't know if everybody knows right. what that is, but that was rooted in teaching women how to be wives. Right. Um, and in the professional world, a lot of men became chefs, but women, a lot of women dropped out because they wanted to have children. And that landscape is really changing because it's so available and there's a lot more concessions being made in the workplace. And P.S. My mother was an engineer and she worked with all men in the 60s and 70s. <laughs> That's, awesome. That's awesome. Very cool. You have been trailblazer since the beginning. <laughs> That's awesome. Melanie, I know you have tons of good stuff. Uh, how can people connect with you and find out more about what you do? Uh, my website is 
gatherculinary.com. And, you know, that was inspired by gathering because where I grew up on a farm, we always gathered together. Um, and I'm happy to answer emails. So if anybody has questions, they can email me. My email is melanie at gatherculinary.com. And all of that is also on the website. And <clears throat> I'm on a platform called Kitch, which is K-I-T-T-C-H. And there I do free cooking classes. So people can just pop on and see and you can you're not paying a thing for it. It's and it's not just me. It's hundreds of culinary creators. So it's also a great platform for people who might be in underserved communities and who are like, hey, I can't really afford a class. Right. Absolutely. Um, I always say that there's a price to be paid for convenience. And in this particular case, that price is one of the essential life skills that families need and individuals need. So I, I really appreciate what you do. Thank um, you. Yeah. So uh, guys, I want to make sure that you definitely, definitely stop whatever you're doing and you check the description box of this video. I have enclosed all the information regarding Melanie, her organization and the products and programs that they have. Check it out. Role model the behavior that we as parents don't have all the answers and it's okay. It's okay to reach out. There are people who have our best interests at heart. And when we need help, we need to make a habit of reaching out and connecting to each other. Um, so that's important for the kids to learn and you can role model that behavior. If you haven't already done so, make sure you click subscribe so you get notifications of all the experts that come to this channel like Melanie and share their gifts, share their expertise. Uh, and Melanie, thank you again. I know you are super busy. I really appreciate you being here. You're such a role model. Uh, and uh, we'll be collaborating a lot more in the future. I know that. I hope uh, so. But any final words for our audience members before we finish today? Uh, don't feel guilty and just move forward. That's all you got to do is put one foot in front of the other and make it happen. Yes. Just like cooking, you just start ingredients and then you problem solve. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well said. Well said. Very, very, very nice. Thank you so much. Thank Until you. Thanks, Dr. L.